Good morning, everybody. This is the lecture video for Chapter Three: The Fun Arts of a Setting Type. We have、uh, several things that we want to discuss、uh, in this chapter: autonomy, heading characters, how to define a paragraph,、uh, and some fun features associated with paragraphs. So, um, um, let's talk about autonomy first. And again, when we want to talk about the autonomy, we want to open a InDesign document first. We have InDesign launched here, and click Document.、Uh, this dialog box, most of you probably are already very familiar with.、Uh, again, we want to uncheck the facing page for this time.、Uh, keep the intent as print, letter size, one column. That's fun.、Um, For now, margins point、uh, five inch around.、Um, again, you know that、uh, when this icon is linked, that means all the value are、uh, exactly the same. If you change one of them, all the other three will also be changed.、Uh, if you want to have different values for the margins, you just click this link,、uh, break it. That way, it will work. So for now,、uh, let's、uh, leave it as default and say, "Okay, we have a new document here." Autonomy.、Um, the textbook has a little、uh, discussion about it. Actually, it's the basic research of type. Like a fundamental, a fundamental question is, how do we define the、uh, font size? Normally, we say we want. Twelve point font size.、Uh, how? What kind of a type is a twelve point? Why is twelve point? So the fundamental、uh, questions uh,、um, that can be answered here、um, is is from the the research of type, what we call autonomy.、Uh, if you look at the、uh, page fifty eight of the textbook,、uh, you will see that、uh, normally there. Are Four lines.、Uh, so let's、um, let's write down something here first. We、uh, we can type something here.、Um, in the text, they, they type it as a vanilla yogurt. Why? O G. U R T. We can make it bigger. Select it. Press Shift Command. Great. Then make it bigger. And then we can draw four lines. He is one line. Well, if we want to make it a straight, horizontally straight, we、uh, just put press shift and drag it. And I don't think that's horizontal. Absolutely, absolutely horizontal. So we we drag it. Okay. <clears throat> and then copy it. Command C, copy it, and Command V. We have another line here. Move it to closer. Command V again. We have another line. Move it to here. Let's change it into、uh, dot lines, since this is not a solid line. Dot it so. And command C V. We have another dotted. Again, you remember if you、um, switch to the、uh, preview model, you will see exactly what it will be printed out. So this is how you look.、Um, this is the uh, uh, the zero three one in the textbook. Now you can see that the、uh, letters are seated in、uh, four lines. According to the textbook, 
the upper line is called a cent line, and then this is called a, this line is called a descent line. Now this one is called um, the mean line, and this one is called the base line because all the letters are based on this line. So you have uh, ascent line, mean line, base line, and descent line. Each part of the letter has different names. For example, this part, part of the letter that is above the mean line, that's called ascender. And part of the letter that is below the base line, that's called descender. And you also have uh, the, the distance from here, the top of A to the bottom of A, the distance from mean line to the base line, and that's called x hat. And the uh, distance from the top of a capitalized letter to base line, this distance is called cap hat. So those are different terms that we want to remember. Now again, back to our fundamental question. What is the 12 point? When we say that is, this letter is 12 point, 12 point means the distance from here, from ascent line to descent line, this distance is 12 point. So point is a unit. Next chapter we're going to talk, talk about, in addition to point, there are the unit for distances in, in design. For example, pico, inch. So point is the smallest unit. Now you have an idea what does point means here. Now let's select this and I'm pressing option and drag it. Once it's selected, you can press option and drag it. Now we have a two line of letter. So there's another term that we've discussed in the chapter two. Uh, it can also be explained here. The, the letter is um, the uh, term that we discussed before was called uh, lighting. So for example, if you active the tapping tool, you will see this is the lighting value. So how do we exactly define the lighting value? The lighting value means the distance from the descent line of the upper line to the ascent line of the lower line. So this distance, this distance is called lighting. And there's another distance that we want to know also. It's called a kerning. This is kerning. Uh, oh, I can actually hear this one is kerning and this is the tracking. Uh, kerning is the distance between is the horizontal distance between two uh, letters. For example, right now, you may think, well, there's some space between V and A. Maybe we can make it smaller. And uh, what we can do is that we can uh, uh, click here, increase or decrease the space. Now, right now, we are decreasing the space. That's kerning. We can increase it. Tracking is the is the distance between lot between the letters, not just two letters, but the distance between letters along a line. So you have to if you select the whole line and you change the kerning or the tracking. And this is the increasing, so we can decrease it. And that's tracking. So when you try to make the uh, layout of a document, sometimes you may need to use, you may need to increase or decrease the kerning or tracking so that you can have enough space to put the, the text into it. And autonomy is a uh, exclusive area to for, for study. And so if you want to look at the textbook in page 60 to 61, 
uh, you will see there's a lot of terms um, associated with autonomy. Um, if you want to be a very good uh, desktop publisher, designer, uh, those terms we suggest that uh, you know all of them. So take a time to look at it. In, like we we said before, um, sometimes uh, trying to identify the fonts. We, if you again, if you look at uh, the Adobe typefaces, you will see we have hundreds of fonts. So how do you know which fonts is used uh, in a certain place? Sometimes it's very important for you trying to figure out which fonts is used in which uh, in a place. For example, if someone asks you to create a stuff for Microsoft, then you can simply drag this into Microsoft. But what if you need to type Microsoft yourself and you need to figure out what tab tab face is used here? Is there a way for you to figure out what tab face is used here? The textbook provided a tool, an online tool, which is called uh, Ident Font. Uh, that's in page 59 of the textbook. So here's a web address www.identfont. Um, Let's move um, Microsoft here. See, we are trying to figure out what type of face is used here. Um, oh, that's not a right website. I didn't teethfront.com. Now we want to use a uh, font identifier. So hold on, let me see if we are. Okay, here, this is the uh, website. Uh, we were confused just now. So here you can see um, um, this is the column that you can use to identify the font of a, uh, used in a certain place. Um, first of all, um, we try to answer those questions to find out what font, what typeface is used here. And the question is, um, the, does the character has serifs? We all know that uh, serif means uh, there's strong small drugs at the end of the drug and not sans serif means there's no small drugs at the end of the stroke uh, the drug the st uh, stroke here if you look at the end of the stroke there's no small strokes so clearly this is sans serif say sans serif it asks some questions about a Q and we don't have any Q here so we're not sure on that question a uh, dollar sign, we do not have any dollar sign here. Four, we don't have four here. Um, M, yes, we have M. On the baseline, the middle, is it on the baseline or is it not on the baseline? Above the baseline. Now, this is on the baseline. So, on the baseline. I, do we have I? Yeah, it's a capitalized I. Uh, we do not have capitalized I, so I'm not sure. G, uh, we do not have capitalized G. So sometimes this process can be very tedious. Uh, question mark, we do not have it. Is it parallel or, or sloping? Parallel, I would say. So parallel. Smaller case G, do we have it? No. 
not sure. Why? No, we don't have it. Not sure. You? Mm -hmm. No. A? No. B? No. Why? No, we do not have it. K? No. So uh, you can see that this process can be tedious, but sometimes you just need to go through the process and eventually this website will help you to find out what typeface is used here and then you can go back to InDesign and type Microsoft and choose that typeface. Then you will make the uh, Microsoft uh, in this format exactly the same format yourself. Okay, now we want to go back to normal or uh, preview, uh, I mean normal mode, um, and uh, let's move uh, those stuff to the upper part so that we have some spaces uh, in the lower part that we can work on. Uh, now we want to talk about the uh, heading characters. Uh, what is heading characters? Okay, now let's create a text frame. Like I said, when you create a text frame in InDesign, you can click Type to and drag it, create a text frame, or you can use the rectangle rectangle tool or rectangle frame tool, create a rectangle here, and then simply press Type and double click here, and then you activate it as a text frame, and then we will work. Uh, so now we just use this way. Uh, we want some text. You can tap something here. Uh, we are doing some thing using e ID, which is in design. But sometimes you do not want to tap that many taxes. You just want to have some tax to work with. Uh, you can uh, in design give you a function of that. Put your uh, cursor here. Press Control. Click it. You will see this is called a context menu. This context menu is very useful. We will use it again and again later on. For now, go to the context menu, find out uh, fill with placeholder text, and click it. And now you see that you have a lot of uh, placeholder texts here, and those are all meaningless texts, but uh, it can take places. Uh, it's text that you can work with. Uh, so uh, let's make it larger so that we can see it clear. Uh, remember command 2, we increase the font size to 200%. I mean, not really the font size, but the view percentage to 200%. Uh, percent. If you look at it, it's 200%. So here are the text that we're trying to, uh, we're trying to work with. Um, what is a heading character? If you look at the text, you only have the letters, spaces, dot, and those are uh, those are shown characters. You can see it. In any chance, you can see those letters. Her heading characters are the characters that are also in the text, but you cannot see it right now. You have to, if you want to see it, you have to use a special function to call it out. Uh, specifically, you, you need to use uh, Shift Command I. Uh, not Shift Command, Option, let me see, Option Command I. Yes, Option Command I. So when you press op put your cursor into the document, press Option Command I, and or maybe if you can find it from a view, Uh, from, you can find it from tab also. If you click tab, a good and this here is the heading character. Click it, it will be gone, and click it again, it will be, it will be back. So you can see those are the fundamental ha heading characters. Uh, this is this sign is called a paragraph sign. It marks the end of a paragraph. So this is this one line is a paragraph itself. And this dot is um, a space dot. Uh, 
uh, whenever there's a space, there's actually a dot over there as a heading character. And so ev at the end of every paragraph, there's a paragraph sign. At the end of a story, there's an end of a story sign, so it marks the end of a story. Basically, those are the um, heading characters. You have a, a space dot, uh, you have a end of paragraph sign, you have end of a story sign. And later on, we're going to talk about, uh, you, can, you can also have some type sign, for example, uh, if we put our cursor here at the end of this paragraph and then we press tab tab uh, you, you, how many times you, you press it it will create how many tabs are. this is also a heading character or you can have another heading character called soft return for example uh, now let's make it smaller uh, command one just one page it's 100%, so this is easier to work with. Hmm. Now we have one paragraph here. Um, if you put your cursor here and press Shift Return, then you create a soft return here. A soft return break the line into two, so this line stop here, and the rest of the text goes to from the next line. But a soft return is not a return, is not a hard return. Uh, this is a hard return. So a hard return marks the end of a paragraph. A soft return, which again is created by pressing shift and return, uh, only break the line into two lines, but it it does not create a new paragraph. So this is uh, the line stop here, this new line start here. This is the new line. But overall, this is still one paragraph. It's still considered as one paragraph. Uh, and InDesign has uh, character functions and paragraph functions. Character functions will apply to all the text that has been selected. For example, if you select those and increase the size, and only those tags that has been selected will be uh, their size will be increased. In. So font size is a character uh, is a character uh, function. It will only apply to the selected characters. Uh, we we are pressing Command Z to undo what we have done just now. Paragraph function, however, is something applies to the whole paragraph. For as long as you put your cursor anywhere, anywhere within the paragraph. So, for example, if we put our cursor here, we active the paragraph formatting control and uh, space before, so we can add some space before. Let's say if we add a space before, do you think the space will be added to here or here? And the answer is that it will be added to here. Again, because this soft return does not create a new paragraph. So uh, the, the, this is still considered as the beginning of the second paragraph. So if we put our cursor here, increase, uh, this is a space before. You can see that the paragraph, the space is still uh, increased here. Same way, if you put your cursor here, uh, increase space oft, then the space will be added not here but here. Okay. So if we put our cursor here, space oft, and you can see that the spaces are added here. So that is a uh, paragraph function. Again, soft return does not create a new paragraph, so all the paragraph functions are still applied to the text before the soft return and after, and those after the soft return.
And now uh, let's talk about um, um, raised cap and drop cap. Raised cap and drop cap are functions that you will see very often in the magazines, articles, sometimes in the newspaper articles. A uh, raised, raised cap is a character function. So if you want to raise a the uh, size of the, the first letter, you have to select it and press Shift Command, great, then raise it. And you can change it to color. Let's say we give it a red. And so that's a raised cap. A raised cap, again, is a character function. You have to select it. it on the other hand, a dropped cap is a paragraph function. Paragraph function means you put your cursor anywhere within that paragraph, and then you apply this function. Function will be applied to the paragraph. So we put our cursor here and choose drop cap. Here is drop cap. And number of lines do you want this letter to be dropped by one line, by two line, by three line? And let's say we wanted it by one line, nothing happened because it's only one line, two lines, three lines. That looks good. You want just the one letter to drop down, or you want two letters drop to drop down. If you want two letters to drop down, change this one into two, three, four, five. Normally we just have one, so let's make it go back to one. Uh, if you want, you can also change uh, the color of this one. So that's drop cap. Again, drop cap is a paragraph function. Now we want to talk about a little bit uh, how to add spaces and Happens into the text. Sometimes uh, you want add a uh, uh, a special spaces. Uh, all the, uh, we, we know that there are spaces between all the letters. But sometimes you want to add some special spaces. For example, the text textbook uses an example called Doctor Smith. There's a space between Doctor and Smith, and when you, when you put a Dr. Smith, let's put it, let's change the color of Dr. Smith so that uh, it will be easier to read. If you put a Dr. Smith into the text, sometimes when you add the text, you will make the Dr. Smith looks like this. And this is not really professional because Dr. Smith, um, professional designers want them to be always together. So how do we make them uh, always together? Here is a way to do it. You change this regular space, delete it. Let's delete it, okay? And insert a non breaking space here. So put your cursor here, press Ctrl, call out the context menu. Again, we've said that this context menu it will be very important uh, from now on. So we're going to use it uh, from time to time. Go to insert special character, um, uh, white space, insert white space, and uh, non-breaking space. You can choose this one, or non-breaking space fixed width. Uh, let's choose non-breaking space, okay? So you have a, see the, this is not a dot, this is a tri small triangle. I make it larger so that you can see it. That's a uh, non-breaking space. That means if you add some letter here, and one part of this Dr. Smith goes down to the next line, the overall uh, Dr. Smith goes to the next line. So there, those two will stick uh, together all the time. Um, you don't need to worry about the doctor is at the upper line, Smith goes to the lower line, uh, which again is a sign of unprofessional designing. So that's a um, 
uh, non-breaking space. Similarly, uh, let's make it a back to 100% again. Similarly, you can also insert a non-breaking half it. Uh, sometimes if you want uh, the two parts at the beginning of the half and and the parts at the end of the heaven, you, if you want them to be together all the time. For instance, Dr. Smith's phone number uh, is, let's say if it's a 408, this is my phone number actually, and uh, let's change the color to red. If you want this space to be together all the time, uh, you need to change this regular space into a non-breaking space uh, insert white space okay here it is non-breaking space and we want to change this hyphen into a non-breaking hyphen so go to insert special character Heaven and a dash, non breaking heaven. Okay, now if you add the text, so the number, phone number will always be together. See, um, they will either be on the upper line or it goes to the lower line altogether. So they will be always together. That way, it will be very easier for people to read it. Since we are talking about, um, you can, uh, if you look at here, you can, if you look at the con uh, context menu, control, context menu, uh, insert what space or insert special character happens. You can see you can insert m dash, in dash, discretional happen, and non breaking happen. You can insert all kinds of stuff. So remember this context menu, we're going to use it again later on. Someone like this uh, heavens here, like this heaven, when the words is break into two lines, there's a heaven, uh, which tells us that this words has not been spelled out uh, totally. Part of this words goes to the next line. There's a heaven here, uh, has the same meaning. But sometimes some, someone does not really like those heavens. Let's say if you do not want to have this heaven in the document, what you need to do is you need to, if you click once, you select the words, click twice, you can select line, click three times, you select a paragraph, four times, you select the whole word. If you select the whole document, go to this menu here, click it, and uh, half an. Now it's checked. By default, it's checked. If you uncheck this heaven here, uh, see all the heaven will be taken away. But not this heaven, because this heaven um, is a special heaven. It's a non-breaking heaven. It will be still over there. But all the other heaven automatically added by InDesign to show that the words has not been spelled out, those heaven will be gone. So this is something that you want to know. If you want that heaven to be there, put it there. Uh, if otherwise, you just close this heaven setting. Two more things we want to talk about the heavens. Now this is a heaven. If you press Option and the heaven, you have a longer line. That's called a. Uh, that's called a in dash. I think that's a um, yeah. That's called a in dash. Um, and then if you press Shift Option, it's happen. You have an even longer uh, dash. That's called m dash. M dash. And so you remember how do we create them. Uh, if you do not want to use this, use this shortcut key, remember uh, you can use the context menu. Press Control and insert special character, half and dash, 
in dash you have that one and press uh, control context menu insert a special character have another dash m dash you have a longer one uh, I believe that in, in writing or English classes you already learned that uh, uh, heaven are used to connect two parts of a word so for example if you have a combination word uh, you want to use the heaven uh, for instance semi uh, let's say semi industry uh, so you want to you want to put a heaven here between those two parts to connect those two parts of the same word in in dash is used to connect two words to make it phrases for instance um, it's Houston to Boma so that's a uh, that, that's where you want to use um, the uh, in dash M dash which is the longest one is used to connect two sentences for example I like that and then shift option let's talk about the other thing now which means um, this here um, the M dash may, means that we want to switch our topic from one to another uh, in, 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 other, in another situation that you want to connect two sentences together uh, for example um, sometimes you need to use the M dash to explain something for, for instance um, you can say I like that it is so good and why you like it because it's so, so, so good so in that case in any case, you need to you connect two sentences. You use M dash. So that's the heaven, um, M dash, and M dash. Another thing we want to talk about a type uh, in this chapter is um, you notice that just like a word, um, when you select all the tags, you can uh, ident you can uh, indent give the indent the copies. This is align left, align to the middle, align to the right, and this is align toward the span. Where spin means when you are using a facing page, since we did not really really using face, we did not really use facing page here. It doesn't really work. Um, so, but uh, this is um, justify. No, align left means all the text go to the left, and here is not really land up on the right side. But justify means it's land up on both sides. You can see the differences here. Justified. Um, so normally we we, use, we just use this align left, and that's the indent. And let's say if you want to use InDesign to create a paper to submit it to a, a professor, uh, a professor requires you to use APA style. So let's say you're going to use uh, you're going to create a citation here. Uh, the citation is kind of like, um, like this textbook. It will be R Y D B R G T Exploring Adobe in Design CS6 in City Publisher. So this is a, um, um, well, this is not very long. Uh, but let's say we, we have a very long one, so we, we just add some uh, uh, letters, make it a two line. And when you create APA style, um, you know that um, normally for APA style, the first line goes hang, on, hang out a little bit. 
So how do we how do we uh, use indesign to create that function? Here's how we do it. Put your cursor in that entry, and uh, this is um, left indent. So let's give it a left indent. Uh, let's say we give it a uh, that's one pico one point one pico. Hmm. So this is a uh, twelve eleven point one pico. Okay, let's give it uh, one pico. Uh, Twelve point means one pico in this case, and so you can see overall how all the tags are uh, having a left indent here, and and then here in the first line left indent, let's give it a negative one p, and you can see that the first line goes um, out a little bit, and when you make this. To all the other kids, we have some space between the paragraphs, so let's make sure the paragraph um, this is zero. So you can see that uh, this is the, how you create a APA style. Well, uh, one more thing is that um, when you uh, select all the um, looks like we cannot put everything in one page. So I'm going to move this thing uh, up a little bit and uh, drag this. We still have some overset text, as you can see here. So um, um, it's still a lot left. And if you think that this is this part is too ragged, it's not smooth. You can uh, select the text and go to uh, the menu here and find out balanced ragged lines. You will see that uh, this part is more smooth right now. And if you don't like it, Command Z, and you you will go back. And if you want to have it again, just to click the balanced regular lines again. So that's a function that uh, you may want to uh, remember. Sometimes um, you may have a quotation mark like this. And like this, so you have uh, you have the first uh, quotation mark goes to here, and then the uh, the second part to here. You may wondering, can I put it into one um, simply into one uh, into one line, and let's see if it works or not. Uh, so we select these tags, and. Uh, Go to uh, tab, story, and you see the difference. Now the um, uh, the quotation uh, mark they hang out of the document a little bit, but they will put it into one paragraph, uh, one line. So uh, this is a small trick that you can use uh, when you uh, uh, try to design the layout of a document. Let's call it hand punctuation. Uh, it's discussed in page 72 of the textbook. Well, the uh, last thing that we want to discuss today is um, is the quotation mark. Uh, we, we, we still have two things left. The, uh, another thing we want to discuss today is the quotation mark. So uh, let's make it bigger so that I can see it. Um, we have a quotation mark here just now. Mm, 
this is the quotation mark. It's curvy, so it's also called a curvy quotation mark, or uh, as sometimes it, it is called, it's called a typographer uh, typographer's quotation mark. By default, InDesign will give you this typographer's quotation mark. But sometimes you you do not need this curvy mark, uh, quotation mark. You you may need you may want to have a a straight quotation mark. For example, let's say you want to put a one inch here, and you put a one and uh, a quotation mark here, but it does not looks like inch because the inch mark should be a straight mark. So instead of putting a typographer's quotation mark here, you want to uh, delete it and go to uh, insert control. Um, Um, it's a glaive actually, so let's go to tab, glaive, and uh, all fonts, entire fonts. Um, so let's see if we can see the quarter mark here or not. Yeah, here it is. So that's a, uh, that's called a tab writer's quotation mark, so it's a straight. Uh, that's just for you to know. The last thing uh, we, we want to discuss in this chapter is uh, sometimes uh, you, we remember that last time we talked about the uh, uh, the markup. Uh, this is an example of a markup. And sometimes uh, uh, your client may simply give you a markup like this, and you may read uh, this type of markup in the uh, hand student handout when you do project. What does this markup means? Again, this value here is the font size. Uh, so how large you want the tab face to be? This is the Latin value. Uh, go to the um, uh, character formatting control panel here. This is where you put the uh, font size. This is where you put the Latin value, and both of those should be points. They should use points as as unit. And here, uh, this twenty five in this case is the length measure. How long the length should be, uh, and this is the length. This is the length. Clearly, this length is much longer than this length. Um, and research has shown that when the line are too long, readers feel uncomfortable. For example, when you read this line, you need to read from here goes to here, here goes to here. So that's quite long. You, that's why many times we need to bring break the long lines into different columns. And if you select the text frame, command B. Uh, change the column from one to two. See that you have uh, two columns here. Uh, you break uh, the lines into different uh, columns. Uh, there's a, there's a reason. Uh, There's a reason that the text, uh, the text, the are not really bring into two columns. Uh, let me see why. I'm using Command Z again. Um, you may need to use this uh, Command Z many times. Uh, Probably because um, the uh, the tags are put in a rectangle, so that's why. Uh, uh, let me see.
So this, uh, in this case, you break the text into two columns. Each column are shorter and it's easier to read. Uh, but here, the 25 in this case is not 25 points. 25 points probably is a distance like this. It's 25 picos. So chapter 3 tells us that uh, uh, when you want to create a, when you, when you want to figure out how long the line should be, normally the l length of the line should be, um, let's see, uh, should be 2 to 2.5 times of the tap font size. What it means here, for example, this is the, the tap, uh, tap size here is um, the tap size here is 12 point. So the in that case, the length of the line should be 2 times of the 12. That's 24 picos. Or 12 times 2.5 and which is uh, 12 times 2.5 um, maybe 24 plus 6 so 30 so it should be the comfortable comfortable line length should be from 24 to 30 picos um, that's uh, what has been shown in the research Okay, that's all about chapter three. Um, uh, chapter three also talk about the uh, proofreader's marks uh, in page seventy six, uh, but I don't think we needed to go through this because you are quite familiar with this already. Uh, well, thank you very much. Bye bye.